Welcome to Pretty Lies and Alibis. Join us as we seek the truth and travel the long road to justice. Good evening, everybody. It is almost midnight. Something evil's lurking in the dark. What's that from, Fruit Loop? Thriller. There you go. Uh, I'm that Gigi. dance. I know, right? I can do the dance. Oh, I know. It's so contagious, though. It's so fun. I did it with a group of uh, teachers when I worked at the high school for, um, we had a talent show. I and, remember that. Yeah, and so one of the teachers came to me and said, hey, will you do the Thriller dance with us? It was awesome. The students went wild. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool when you you see. I, I just Google it sometimes. Yeah, it's all awesome. groups come together and do it. It's pretty cool. I remember that first summer Thriller came out. We would like ride our bikes home at a certain time because they showed it. I think at the top of the hour. Oh yeah. For a while, and we would no matter where we were, we would go watch it. Um. So Sherlock, like I told you guys, he's he gets out sometimes, and I just with with my Nana hip, I can't do much. And, but what's funny is we have this uh, chihuahua that roams the neighborhood. He has a home. He's funny. He, he's very muscular. I mean, he almost looks like he's on steroids. He's very muscular. <laughs> and he barks all the time. And he'll come right to the edge of your, your yard and bark at you, but won't cross that line. So Sherlock and I were out in the front today. And Ramel, the, oh gosh, this dog's a pain. Uh, he starts barking at Sherlock. And I mean, he's putting on a show and Sherlock kind of looks at me chill and before I know it Sherlock takes off across the yard (laughs) and jumps on Rommel the dog starts making this god-awful sound like he's being killed now Sherlock's uh claws are are trimmed a little bit right now they're not gone but I don't know if uh he drew if Sherlock drew blood but uh Ramel was quite dramatic about it. It was hilarious. Yeah, they make that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, the Chihuahuas are cute. I think they're really cute. But man, they can be mean. Oh, I'm gonna tell you. When I served papers, I was more scared of those little ankle biters than <laughs> a German Shepherd. I know, right? They sneaky. They'll come right. They used to get bit on the back of the leg. Oh yeah. They'll sneak attack you and just chomp on you. I know it. So we have um, a sponsor. And um, so we're sponsored by two cool t-shirt quilts. And um, we're getting our shirts ready right now. We were talking about that last episode. But I was looking at their webpage. And I did not know all the stuff you could use on these quilts. I know, right? It's crazy. So tell our listeners some of the things that that you can put on these quilts. Uh, They can use socks, baby clothes, photographs, baseball caps. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. That's not even the whole list. Yeah. Um, So you can check out their webpage. Even if you don't want to choose them to give you your quilt, they uh, have a lot of good advice on how to make sure you're getting exactly what you need to get together. And um, we're very excited. I think I'm going to get a couple made. And I, I got to do something with all my Clemson t-shirts. Like, I, I literally have 100. Yeah. So I think I'm going to do a memorial quilt for my pop with our Clemson shirts together. Yeah. Th- it's really cool. Um, I mean, I've heard people say, I don't know what to do, like yeah. who to use, what company to use. Yeah. Because sometimes you're like, oh, can I trust a company to send my t-shirts? Yeah, not, that was so. my thing too. Yeah. So this, this company is awesome. Yeah. We're going to definitely do that. We'll sh- uh, shoot up some pictures when we get ours back. It'll be a yeah. little while because we haven't gotten our t-shirts together. So we have some Duggar news. Uh-oh. Oh, Josh's trial has been postponed to November 30th. Yeah, they wanted it for longer, but the judge kind of went, met in the middle with what prosecution and defense were asking for. And he will have a pre-trial conference on November 18th of this year. And uh, TLC, they said, they said uh, the time has come to take the Duggars off the air. There you go. Um, You know, if you think about it, when they first signed up for this show, the family knew about the molestation. Yep. And didn't say a word. Um, Gosh, I don't know. I mean, these kids, some of the kids are really amazing. I haven't watched it enough to really know their personalities, but what I've seen of some, especially the ones that are breaking free, that are doing their own thing and defying all the rules. Um, but I, I think it's past time that the Duggars fade into oblivion and just yeah. our collective thoughts. I never watched it either. It, it was always so weird to me. Yeah. Um. So if you remember, we talked about this cryptic post that Nate Eaton put out there about these sealed records. 
And so um, what we figured out is that this came from something that Mark Means filed on June the 18th. Uh Uh-oh. So attached to the motion to compel was 169 pages of text messages, witness statements, and other documents with evidence. Ruh-roh. As much as I check <laughs> that site every day. We missed it. I missed it. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't have said anything about it on here because you'd never want to do that. But I would know and I would be happy I knew. Exactly. Um, so East Idaho News got the documents the morning they were filed, but... They were quick to see the error, and later that day, Judge Boyce sealed the motion and all documents attached to it. Darn. So, Mark Means took a little field trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is vis- his visit to the prosecution. Yeah, he went by the prosecutor's office. Now, I'm pretty sure I remember Judge Boyce giving the state a deadline of July 15th to have all of that in. Yeah. Um. I mean, they're entitled to it at this point, but let's just go through what Mark Means did and what he's saying now they need to do to make him happy. Oh, yeah. So he is asking the court to impose sanctions against the state. Um, Means refers to when the state said uh, defense counsel can inspect and copy or photograph the items by making arrangements with the Fremont and Madison County Prosecutor's Office or any agency Holding items or evidence. So I'm curious if he woke up really early at 4 a.m., he says, and just decides to go. Did he call and get confirmation that they would see him? Probably not. Okay. I ain't driving that far. There's if like I don't know, five hours. Yeah, if I don't know, they can't see me. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, mm. So he said he informed them on June 18th that he would be arriving on June 21st at 10 a.m. at the Fremont County Prosecutor's Office to get the discovery. (laughs) But Uh, I just want to know, did he get a confirmation? I mean, I can inform you of a lot of things, but if you don't acknowledge it. Well, the thing is, you sent an email. I mean, maybe they missed the email. They didn't miss the email. The judge gave them the (laughs) date to comply by. I mean, you know, it's just, if if they don't say, yes, we are available today, make the trip, you know. Don't, don't, don't you know that they're at his beck and call. They sit around yeah. and do nothing and wait on means to call. I know. Or submit something <laughs> crazy. So on June 21st, means said he woke up at 4 a.m. to travel to Fremont to get there early and allow time for the transfer of discovery. He says he had no confirmation from them that they knew he was coming. Ding, 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 ding. Well. We have a winner. Yeah. Oh, boy. (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, He had brought his own hard drive that he had purchased, and he said he was greeted by a receptionist, and he told him why he was there. And um, one of the paralegals called Lindsey Blake, who said they would provide a response in July, and they would supply the hard drive. And Means said that prior to this statement, he was not told this was the only way to get discovery. Um, Duh. Oh. See, here's the thing. He's mostly civil. Yeah. And so it's a little different with criminal stuff. I mean, I'm sure it's just a whole different, pro- not process, but I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely would have waited for that call back before, you know, I packed the car with some snacks and some good tunes and headed down to Fremont. Well, here's the deal. What person is going to let somebody bring in? I mean, this is a state agency. Yeah. A hard drive from the, from the person that's coming. They're not going to let you insert that in their computer. No. That's just dumb. No. And I mean, I'm sure he wouldn't put no spyware on there. But still. No, but still. It's, uh, they've said they would provide, you know, the discovery, which means they will yeah. get the hard drives, put it on the hard drive, and... What I would assume is likely call and say, hey, we're ready for you. Or if not, make an appointment and make sure that appointment is cleared. Yeah, it's protocol. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So he complained that there was a lack of communication and again requested the discovery be made available to him. He said the deputy uh, district attorney introduced herself and said everything in the Fremont County case, which is the conspiracy cases, by the way. Um, had been produced other than what they were waiting on from the attorney general's office. So 
he's saying he hadn't got discovery and this person is saying no you did we're, we're just missing some things from the attorney general which i guess maybe that's tammy daybell yeah because that was sent to the attorney general although yeah. lindsey blake got that case back is it lindsey Bla- no not lindsey blake uh, yeah, but lindsey is. blake yeah yeah maybe yeah. it's late yeah, it is <laughs> the <laughs> words are running together no it is lindsey blake you're right yeah um so, so let's see i'm trying to see where we are uh we're here yeah Yep. Means refers to previous multiple statements made by Rob Wood in October of last year where he said he had murder evidence and would not turn it over at the t- at that time. That's because there was no charges. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, they were asking for <laughs> Tammy Daybell's autopsy when all she had were the misdemeanor charges. Yeah. Uh, you like, know, yeah. If those charges aren't there, he doesn't have to give you anything. Exactly. Just like he's not going to be able to get anything in Arizona regarding this case. I would assume he would have to get permission to practice law in Arizona if he's going to represent her. Well, you know he's going to do that. He already yeah. filed the paperwork. It's her son with an angel. Come on. Ooh, that's crazy. I wonder if that's something that was really said that somebody, because she said it in front of other inmates. I saw that clip. So I'm curious, was that just fiction? Or did that come from somebody who was with her? It'd be interesting That'd to find out. So Means said he told Wood, you have not even provided the autopsy of Miss Daybell. And he was told it was not relevant to Lori's case. <laughs> yeah. He said he disagreed and said Pryor had not been given the autopsy results either. So everything in your possession hadn't been turned over. Right, yeah. I mean... And this, again, there's they, been no charges at that time. Right. Uh, they had no right to the autopsy. No. And so after he realized he had struck out and he wasn't getting the discovery, he said he would go see his client or, yeah, I guess, w- <laughs> would he say mommy? Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, y'all. It's just like, but it's, uh, as a res- he, he was, he decided to go see Lori since he didn't get the discovery. And he told them that he would return in two hours and would like to get what was available to date and not previously given to him. I mean, like they have time to go back and see, oh, yeah, he has that. It seems to me like that would take days. Oh, yeah. It's with, a ton of evidence. With the amount of discovery. But uh, Mark Means gave him two hours while he went and visited Lori. Ain't that nice of him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Means calls a Fremont County prosecutor's office at noon and was told to call Lindsey Blake. He left her a message asking her to call him back ASAP to discuss the matter and that he would wait for her return call. He said uh, he waited until 2 o'clock in the afternoon to hear from Lindsey Blake, and when he realized he was not, he began the five-hour drive home. He said at the time of the filing, at the time of this filing of this document we're reading, he still has had no response. Oh, my goodness. And Uh, he also said due to the failure of communication by the prosecutor's office, he has used... 11 and a half hours of legal fees at $325 an hour. That equals about $3,737.50. Yep. $3, but he did deduct the two hours he met with Lori since the prosecution denied him. Aww. Now, Scott Reich, uh, I watched a little bit of his show tonight. He said he's never heard of a judge. Um, and has lost my place. Um, being... He said, Scott said, he is now being paid by the state and he has never seen an hourly normal rate. You usually get paid by the state. Right. And um, so here's what Means says. These are the costs he incurred. He traveled 728 miles round trip, which was four. The gas mileage was $422.24. How is that 700 miles? Four and a half hours is like 200 yeah, it's like from us from here to Myrtle Beach. Yeah, and we make that trip all the time. Where the world is he going? Uh, he must live in Botswana. <laughs> he took the scenic route. He went through Yellowstone for some yeah. pretty views. Yeah. Uh, he paid $186.32 for the purchase of the hard drive. You can get a lot cheaper on Amazon, just saying. You can get a four terabyte cheaper than that. For a total of $4,326.06. You know, here's the thing. He took this case on knowing that that she was going to be hours away from his office, and now it's a problem. Oh, yeah. Um, not only that, but he didn't have an appointment. He went with his fingers crossed. Um, you know, I, I, I kind of wonder, I mean, I know at some point if death is handed down, they will have to get different lawyers, and I'm sure Means and Pryor will stay on of counsel. 
But I wonder if the state could say, look, we didn't approve an attorney who lives all these hours away. Yeah. Um, I don't think they would make him leave, but I think they could say, uh, the gas mileage you're complaining about, that's on you, dude. Exactly. And here's my deal. Do you think I would drive to Myrtle Beach if I didn't know for sure I could meet or get what I needed? Yeah, I know. It's, it's a phone call. Yeah, that's a that's a whole like whole day. Yeah. Just driving. Yeah. Except for the two hours that he saw Lori. Um, he said the fees would not have been incurred if the state had complied with the rules of law and had communicated a notice or response to reschedule. But we still don't see where he said they confirmed he could come. They have until July 15th. Right. So yeah. He says the refusal to comply is in bad faith, lacks professionalism, and is shocking. Mm, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> He's requesting a hearing on the matter. Surprise, surprise. No. And he provides a notice of reservation of rights regarding this matter, including, but not limited to, dismissal of the case. <laughs> not going to happen, yeah. Mark. Uh, a Brady violation motion or sanctions. So tell us what a Brady violation is. So under the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, um, the prosecutor has a right to disclose favorable evidence to defendants upon request if the evidence is material to guilt or punishment. Failure to comply is a Brady violation. I don't think we're there. No. <laughs> uh, he's asking for full and complete responses in an expedited manner. He's also act, asking for sanctions, you know, against the state, which Scott Rice says he's never seen a judge put sanctions on a state. Um, but he's asking for sanctions for cost fees and other appropriate sanctions as the court sees fit, but not limited to a dismissal. Okay, here's my question. Isn't it, I mean, wouldn't that be in your attorney fees? What you're paying them? Yeah. Wouldn't they figure some of that in and say, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he's dealing with... His mileage, I mean, from what I see, I have I have a person who keeps us up to date on his comings and goings there, and he's there all the time. I almost wonder at this point if he doesn't have a you know, a place to stay there. If he don't, he's... He, you can't be driving 10 hours a day and be there every day, mostly during the week. I mean, before no. the incompetence, he was there nearly every day. Sure. So that was kind of what all that was about. Um we're just going to have a lot of these filings with him, I think. Um, Scott Rice, you know, tonight was talking about how this is a very much a civil filing, which is what he's familiar with. This isn't a, so much a criminal filing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. yeah, it's just crazy the news we've got just coming out of this case. And then we've got Summer Wells and uh, the Murdoch case. And just we've been staying busy, busy, busy. So we thought we are going to try to keep these episodes to one case so that if you're interested in something but you're not interested in the in the first part of the podcast you know you don't have to go fishing around for it yeah so i think it'll just be a little bit more frequency um and a little less time not, sure. not the full hour but we're just trying to sort of this is kind of what we've been doing is um just brainstorming about how we can make it easier for the listener uh, funner for the listener i forgot to put the meme war thing up sorry i will do that tomorrow uh, but let's see if it, it's only Wednesday now. Well, it's Wednesday. The clock just ticked over. That's right. We still got a couple of days. Maybe some more stuff's going to come out. Who knows? But I think uh, maybe Gilbert Police is getting close to releasing their findings about the attempt on Brandon. I think once yep. that is wrapped up, maybe that's going to be all the charges. Yeah, um, I agree. I don't really see much else. Uh, where where they could be charged, but anyways, I hope you guys have a good eve. Well, it's it's not it's it's morning. It's, it's morning. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I need some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we will be back on in the next couple of days. We are gonna keep talking about the Summer Wells case. Very weird stuff. I can't. I watched an interview with the uh, mom and dad today, and the mom was on something. Now, totally understandable if she's super stressed and maybe they gave her something like Xanax to calm her down. Hard to know if that's her normal demeanor or if maybe something else, but I, I can't figure this case out. It's making my brain hurt. There's so many rumors and speculations and not much real news to come out. So it's definitely a, a challenge to follow this one. Yep. But we're still hoping that she's out there somewhere. Um, 
we shall hopefully see soon. Hopefully they find her very soon. But just, yeah, so it's been a good day for justice. Um, made my day that Charles had his day. Oh, yeah. And uh, yep. got those charges. And I know his family is, is feeling some relief tonight. And um, so, yeah. All right, guys. Well, we will see you in a day or two. And I uh, hope you have a, a good rest of your Wednesday. <laughs>